1957, a film called Plan 9 from Outer Space hit the screens, directed by Ed Wood. It's widely known as one of the worst movies ever made, but that hasn't stopped it from becoming a cult classic over the years. Despite its many flaws, the movie's unintentional humor, low-budget charm, and unique status have kept people entertained and coming back for more. One scene that sticks in people's minds is the use of shaky cardboard tombstones, adding an unintended funny element. These kinds of moments have made the film a classic in the category of so bad it's good cinema. Share your own experiences or memories related to this movie in the comments below. In the world of unconventional cinema, there exists a certain cult classic that has intrigued audiences for decades. Despite its flaws and eccentricities, the movie holds a unique charm that has captivated viewers worldwide. The director behind this intriguing piece was no ordinary filmmaker. Lacking traditional connections and resources, he embarked on a journey to bring his vision to life, surrounded by a group of equally eccentric individuals. Together, they crafted a film that defied conventional norms and left an indelible mark on cinematic history. Unlike many of its contemporaries, this movie aimed for something more profound than mere entertainment. It sought to explore themes and ideas that challenged the status quo, albeit in a rather unconventional manner. Despite its shortcomings, the film exudes a certain genius and passion that is hard to ignore. It may not be a masterpiece by traditional standards, but it has managed to carve out a niche for itself in the annals of cinematic history. For enthusiasts eager to delve deeper into the world behind the movie, there exists a documentary that sheds light on its making. Featuring interviews with key cast and crew members, it offers valuable insights into the creative process behind this cinematic gem. In essence, the enduring appeal of this movie lies in the dedication and perseverance of its creator. It serves as a reminder that true passion knows no bounds, and that sometimes it's the unconventional that leaves the most lasting impression. Supervised by the veteran freelance makeup artist Harry Thomas, the makeup in the movie involved Thomas's expertise. He previously worked on Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments, the most expensive Hollywood production up to that time. Lyle Talbot, part of a glamorous group including Bette Davis, Glenda Farrell, and others, participated in a lavish publicity campaign for a musical before supporting as President Franklin D. Roosevelt at his first inauguration in March 1933. Edward D. Wood Jr., the director of the movie, had budget significantly lower than that of his biopic Ed Wood in 1994, as revealed in the documentary Ed Wood Look Back in Angora. In the world of movies, there are some fascinating stories about people who did things differently. One example is Edward D. Wood Jr., who made films that were different from the usual. Another interesting person is Myla Nermi, who became famous for her spooky character Vampira. Then there's Mae West, who made a big decision that affected the movie industry for a long time. Edward D. Wood Jr. was known for making unusual movies that many people enjoy watching. Myla Nermi, also known as Vampira, became very famous for her scary character. Mae West made a choice that changed things in Hollywood. These stories show how different people have left their mark on the movie industry over the years, showing that creativity and new ideas are important. A movie premiered but one of its actors didn't watch it until much later. Another actor, known for playing Dracula, didn't get many different roles. In 1995, his son chose a career in law. The movie, famous for its unique charm and unintentional humor, still attracts viewers today. Its interesting history adds to its appeal. In the movie Plan 9 from Outer Space, the actor Bela Lugosi played a significant role. Before this film, he performed in live-action reference footage for the Night on Bald Mountain sequence of Walt Disney's Fantasia. In Dracula, Lugosi did not wear fangs, a trait he shares with Frank Langella in Dracula. The narrator in Plan 9 from Outer Space adopts a sensational style similar to newspaper headlines, promising audiences access to lurid secrets based on secret testimony. This approach mirrors the use of true incidents and testimony in 1950s police procedurals like Dragnet. Bela Lugosi, known for his role in the 1957 movie, served as the model for Disney's Chernabog in Fantasia's Night on Bald Mountain sequence. He posed for animators to create the demon character, showcasing Lugosi's traits, expressions, and mannerisms. Myla Nermi, also known as Vampira, would don her vampire makeup at home before traveling by bus to the Quality Studios soundstage for filming. Additionally, Lugosi appeared alongside Lon Chaney Jr. in five films, including The Wolfman and Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. Tor Johnson, a key figure in the film, forged a close bond with Bella Lugosi, reportedly saving him from a suicide attempt by threatening to throw him out of a window. 
Lyle Talbot, known for his voice work, lent his talents to PBS Documentaries Penn and produced by his son Stephen Talbot, voicing Dashiell Hammett in the case of Dashiell Hammett and narrating World Without Walls. Myla Nurmi, the inspiration behind the character Vampira, was immortalized in song by Bobby Bear with Vampira in 1958. These individuals contributed distinct elements to the production, enriching its legacy in diverse ways. In 1956, Edward D. Wood Jr. married Kathy Wood, but his first marriage to Norma McCarty wasn't officially ended. Bella Lugosi's son owns his original Dracula cape, but the one he was buried in wasn't from the movie. Despite rumors, he wasn't buried wearing the Dracula cape. Would once use the alias Actoff Telmig, reflecting the mood during the filming of 1 million ACDC Vodka Gimlet. Wood's famous film, Plan 9 from Outer Space, has become a cult favorite for its unintended humor and low-budget appeal. Even though it wasn't well received by critics at first, it's now considered a classic B-movie. People still love it, and it's inspired many parodies and tributes in popular culture. So, while it didn't make much money when it came out, it's still remembered today as a special part of movie history. Despite its notorious reputation, Plan 9 from Outer Space, a 1957 movie, had some interesting behind-the-scenes stories. For instance, the company secured police cars and uniforms through Tor Johnson's son, Carl Johnson, an officer in the San Fernando Police Department, who also made an uncredited appearance in the film. Even after his passing in 1956, Bela Lugosi's name remained bankable. This led to the posthumous release of at least three of his feature films to U.S. theaters. Lugosi himself supplied his own costume for the film, wearing one of the capes he used when portraying Dracula on stage. This added a personal touch to his character. The film's production had its share of interesting connections and personal touches, making it a unique piece of cinema history. In a significant role in the film, Gregory Walcott became an in-demand supporting actor, featuring in numerous well-known television shows over the following four decades. He also starred alongside Clint Eastwood in several major feature films during the 1970s. His final role fittingly occurred in a 1994 film depicting the making of this movie. Bela Lugosi, renowned for his portrayal of Dracula, was surprisingly unfamiliar with the film in his native Hungary, along with most American pictures he appeared in. Dracula was released in Hungary shortly after its American debut in 1931, but faced criticism from critics and viewers leading to its swift obscurity. Due to strict communist censorship, few American genre films reached Hungary throughout most of the 20th century. It was only with the rise of home video and the internet that many Hungarians finally witnessed Lugosi's performances that had made him a star in the West. Only a couple of his works have been dubbed into Hungarian, with DVD releases becoming unavailable since the early 2000s. Contrary to popular belief, Bela Lugosi did not have a natural widow's peak. He did not wear a hairpiece to create one in Dracula, however, he did wear a fake widow's peak in publicity stills for the movie. Lugosi did, however, wear another, more pronounced widow's peak for his characterization as murder legender in White Zombie. 